I think between my, my, my father um, and our manager at the time, Ian Doyle, we decided that I, I had nothing more to learn as an amateur. Let's just go in and, and, and with the big boys and, 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 and see how it goes, basically. The most important detail for me, um, obviously my father had looked after me through my whole junior and amateur ranks, but when you become a professional there's so much more involved in terms of the, the travelling and booking hotels and, and the cost and everything, so you need someone else to sort of take care of that side of things. When I turned professional at 16, I won the Scottish professional title in my first attempt. So having won that, I qualified to play Jimmy White, you know, my idol, in the first match. And I lost 5-0. I was just sat in my chair in awe of Jimmy White. I was just like, you know, I can't believe I'm playing my hero. I just admiring him. You know, I had to get out of, of the mindset of thinking these were my heroes. They weren't my heroes anymore, they were opponents. That you can improve your cue ball control, you can improve everything by practice, but most of all you can improve the concentration. And you must learn. You don't go on practice tables at tournaments with players. Now seriously, you've got to stay away from them. Most of the top players know how good you are. Let them worry till match day. Let them sweat it out. You don't want to be building up their confidence. The only way to learn is by losing. Yeah. And, and playing better players, because you learn from better players. I mean, I did a couple of tours with Steve in Scotland, like six night tours, where he hammered me every night. But I learned so much from those. I was starting to see a few prospects coming through and Stephen really was just another one but little did I know that the kid I was bashing up in exhibition play up in Scotland and using as cannon fodder every night would become the most dominant force in the game of snooker. Steve Davis was the number one player um, and it wasn't the fact of copying him technically it was more like copying his the way he went around um, his career um, you know, basically just devoting your whole life to being the best and being number one. Steve didn't talk to anyone in those days, so, so you know, he would say hello, shake your hand and then beat you. I think he wanted to basically teach me a lesson. Yeah, I beat Steve Davis on the way to the Grand Prix in Reading, my first major ranking event. And that's a lot, the world champion and favourite for this tournament has been doubled by the 18-year-old young Scottish sensation, Stephen Hendrick. But the UK, and that was the first time I'd beaten Steve over a long distance. And that, that was a major breakthrough for me, because I don't think he believed I could beat him over a long frame match. Yes, he's a promise in the election. The young 20-year-old Scott gains everything he said I'd beaten all the other players and he was the sort of last player that I had to sort of uh, dominate and, and once I'd beaten him a couple of times then you start to think, oh, you know, I've got to measure him now.